Hello, in this talk uh, we will discuss about the electrochemical conversion coating and uh, particularly the electrochemical conversion coating uh, actually uh, deals with those techniques where you use the electrochemical means to form the uh, compound layer on the surface of the metallic materials. So, among these all electrochemical conversion coating the anodizing is very much popular. So, as the name implies this particular technique is called anodizing because here you are using your component as anode in the electrochemical cell and this anode when you just uh, start electrolysis you will find that the oxygen produced at the anode basically reacts with the surface of the metal to form its oxide. So, as it is uh, done in the by using that uh, component as anode you call it as anodizing. So, this process is very much applicable for again those metals which are very prone to passivate like uh, you can apply this anodizing on aluminum, you can apply it on magnesium, you can apply it on titanium and basic purpose of anodizing is again to improve the scratch resistance properties, to improve the corrosion resistance property to a little extent and also to improve the uh, flow coefficient of friction and to reduce the coefficient of friction as a kind of as a pre treatment for subsequent painting operation and purpose may be several folds in aerospace components in aerospace applications, components in bio implant applications. So, several applications you can use the anodizing treatment. So, uh, this particular uh, treatment uh, is uh, for example, uh, if you talk about the aluminum and anodizing of aluminum. So, in aluminum anodizing you will find that there will be formation of um, very thin aluminum oxide layer or corundum layer which is very hard relatively inert electrically insulating and can absorb dyes to color the film. So, again here again aluminum is used as anode, but whenever you use the aluminum as anode naturally on the surface of aluminum there is always a very thin oxide layer which is present. So, prior to application of the material as substrate you have to polish it properly and clean it properly. So, if you talk about the aluminum surface cleaning you will find that aluminum surface cleaning is usually carried out by using that uh, this caustic soda as a solution where you dissolve the oxides which are present in the surface, rinse it, it with water and then dry it just prior to anodizing operation. So, that surface is stress and there is a oxidation process on the surface. The application of this anodized aluminum is in several different sectors like protection against corrosion, scratch resistance and abrasion resistance, decorative purpose, base for plating of uh, plating on aluminum, base for subsequent paint or special surface treatment like thermal barrier coating, electrolytic condensers etcetera. But again if you see the application of anodizing you will find that anodizing uh, leads to formation of very thin oxide layer because uh, in the anode as soon as there is a formation of oxide layer and it covers whole surface the reaction stops and then that uh, oxide cannot grow. So, because of its nature of very thin, uh, thin layer it this particular oxide cannot be used for uh, thermal barrier application particularly for long term application, but this can be used as a pretreatment for subsequent painting or can be applied for the scratch resistance applications. So, the processing steps uh, one, one should follow and is like that one have to someone has to clean the surface properly then pretreat then do anodizing operation coloring and then sealing. So, as I mentioned you anodizing is a kind of uh, treatment after which uh, you will find that lot of porosities are there on the surface. So, usually surface porosities are removed by coloring or sealing operation. So, so that there is no more the, the porosities on the surface. So, cleaning is usually done by alkali solution cleaning uh, and subsequently removal of the grease and uh, surface dirt. Pretreatment etching operation can also be done. Hmm. So, that it can form uh, it is very much uh, clean in nature. So, anodization is a process of building anodic film and combined with the metal by passing the electrical current to an acid bath and 
where aluminum is immersed you have to pass electrical current and coloring may be dyed, done by organic dyeing or maybe by interference coloring. And finally, uh, you do sealing operation because when you do sealing naturally whatever pores are there on the surface that get sealed and uh, usually surface becomes resistance to staining, abrasion and uh, degradation. So, usually people use uh, organic sealing or maybe that wax sealing process to cover the surface with uh, very thin wax uh, evaporated wax. So, that pores are filled and we will not get any open porosity at the surface. So, what you need is that, that a plastic glass or lead tank to hold the acid bath and uh, to hold the dye bath also you need something a plastic or glass tank to hold the etching solution. Uh, the etching solution needs to be kept in a container and that uh, power supply unit is not really so big unit, it is 12 volt DC power supply unit, a sheet of aluminum to make it cathode and set of leads and crocodile script to make the electrical connection and protective clothing should be there and uh, you have to have some space where you can do the anodization operation. And chemical solution may be sulfuric acid 10 to 25 percent solution about 50, 50 to 50 battery acids and water if the, I mean that is the only source or sodium phosphate, sodium hydroxide and uh, wet water soluble dyes are required. Hmm. So, you will you will find that uh, you can do anodizing in two different solutions so, one is chromic acid solution another one is uh, uh, sulfuric acid solution. So, chromic acid solution when you use then in that case the produces coatings of exceptional corrosion resistance and chemical resistance to its film. Uh, so, whenever you are using chromic oxide naturally chromic acid. So, whatever oxide is formed that is having very good corrosion resistance property, but uh, influence of abrasive resistance is minimum. So, this cannot be used for wear resistance purpose and where aluminum is having one of the important limitation of anodizing is that if it is aluminum based alloy or magnesium based alloy then the kinetics of anodizing is very poor actually. So, usually anodizing is applied on pure metallic materials, but whenever it is alloy system it is very difficult to have the anodizing process. Then sulfuric acid anodizing it reduces anything from the heavy duty black, black diet coatings for high tech instruments to cheap control ashtrays. It is also uh, it is it also includes the architectural anodizing primarily for protecting the aluminum window fans from natural color of the as the natural color of the I mean this can be used for protection against the corrosion can also be used for scratch resistance application and uh, this is also having the um, uh, improved fatigue property uh, and uh, it is having sometimes it is harder and more corrosion resistance. So, some cases sulfuric acid as a solution is preferred to chromic acid uh, because of its peculiar nature of high hardness and as a result of which it is having good corrosion resistance as well. This is mainly because of the fact that when you do sulfuric acid anodization the density of the uh, oxide scale is much higher here than that of uh, density of the oxide scale which is formed in chromic acid anodizing operation. So, uh, sorry. So, another type of anodizing is there where sulfuric acid anodizing is done, but process conditions are pushed in such a condition that such a level that uh, there is significantly harder, thicker and denser films is obtained film is obtained. Hmm and uh, it is for corrosion and wear resistance applications. The coefficient of friction is different from that of base metal. So, spoliation may be done may be I mean there may be the chance of spoliation particularly when temperature is a little higher. So, this is about anodizing. So, basic problem of the anodizing is that the film thickness is not really as high as is desired because uh, anodizing the steps in anodizing is that initially there is formation of oxide scale and then uh, because of nucleation and growth of the oxides as soon as the 
whole coverage of the surface is there. The kinetics of the oxidation stop is very slow, it becomes very sluggish. So, usually it is from 1 to 4 micron thickness is the maximum thickness which uh, can be achieved by anodizing operation. So, uh, because of its very low thickness this cannot be applied for uh, wear resistance application where gauging wear or maybe a very hard thicker layer is desired. Uh, it cannot be applied for high temperature oxidation resistance uh, purpose like for thermal barrier coating application. And uh, so, these are two important limitations of the anodizing. So, in order to and also third limitation is that this anodizing treatment can be carried out only on pure aluminum, it cannot be carried out on the aluminum based alloy. So, in order to uh, circumvent these three limitations, uh, people have these days come up with another solution that is plasma electrolytic oxidation process. So, or micro arc oxidation process. So, this is a little bit uh, tailorment of the anodization process, but here because of that tailorment you get significantly increased hardness value. Hmm. That is one of the best uh, requi this uh, requirement of this particular one of the basic uh, deliverables of the micro arc oxidation. And another advantage of this micro arc oxidation is that because of very thick oxide layer, this oxide can also be used for thermal barrier application and wear resistance application to a large extent. So, this tricks behind the formation of uh, plasma electrolytic oxidation or micro arc oxidation is that here basically you use uh, very high voltage uh, AC current for formation of oxide layer on the surface of the metal which is again used as anode and but as soon as there is formation of very thin oxide layer on the surface of anode because of the application of very high voltage the oxide layer breaks down and because of the breakdown of the oxide layer uh, there is formation of a very narrow channel and in that channel there is plasma generation because it acts as a kind of high resistance region and because of the generation of arc uh, you will find that the underlying substrate sometimes gets melted because of high temperature of the micro arc oxidized product and uh, it comes out and then through the channel on the surface of the metal and then there is formation of the oxide scale further. So, like that uh, you there are step wise uh, in each phase of uh, this current in air, there is formation of the oxide layer and then uh, like that this particular because of the step by step oxide layer formation there is growth of oxide to a large extent and this grown oxide uh, does not have much residual stress or uh, interfacial stress as would be there if the oxide layer would be monolithic. So, these are the advantages associated with this micro arc oxidation process. So, it can be again applied on the surface of the metals like magnesium, titanium um, and also the aluminum which are very prone to oxidation. Hmm. So, this particular micro arc oxidation is very important and recent technique. So, that as I mentioned you the characteristics are that, that the, this process another advantage of this process is that in this micro arc oxidation process usually people do use basic bath. So, as they use basic bath there is no problem in the environment. So, drainage of the solution is not a problem. Hmm. So, the process employs alkaline bath uh, with the pH range uh, between 8 to 12 and its environment is sound and the process employs AC current at high voltage and high current and uh, high voltage and high current makes the kinetics faster and as the voltage is higher than that of breakdown voltage of the film, then naturally there is formation of open channel and which are uh, naturally which acts as a kind of path for uh, transportation of the molten metal from the below oxide uh, level to the surface of the oxide scale. So, usually if you see the surface carefully or cross section carefully there would not be the monolithic oxide scale, but rather composite oxide scale or rather sarmate scale formation where as aluminum pure aluminum channel is there in between two oxide channel aluminum or titanium or magnesium channel. So, temperature of the electrolytic bath is not really so high. Hmm. So, micro arc oxidation is also suited for hard coating uh, 
inside the surface of the part. So, it is very important technique and can be applied for wear resistance as well as uh, thermal barrier coating application and in particularly this micro arc oxidation coating can very much be applied on the alloy which is otherwise not possible to do oxidized uh, oxidation, uh, oxidize, oxidization by typical uh, the technique of anodization. So, this is uh, what the uh, these are few usefulness of this uh, micro arc oxidized product. The hardness of the film is more than 1400 kilojoule per millimeter square. The thermal conductivity is much lower than that of metal and hence can be applied for thermal barrier coating application. Dielectric background strength of the MAO film is comparable to that of alpha alumina and hence the coating can be used as an insulating for the electrical and electrical generator application. So, this is the process which, uh, which is shown here. So, you have the you take your component as anode and you can use stainless steel as cathode or uh, any other non consumable like uh, graphite can also be used as cathode. So, you have very high voltage power supply unit which is attached to this uh, cathode and anode and whenever the uh, this is AC basically. So, whenever th that there is uh, the current is on you will find that there will be formation of oxide scale and then it is breakdown and uh, high resistance region generation and uh, subsequent melting of the underlying metal and its transportation on the surface. During off cycle you will find that the transported metal get melted and then again in the on time it gets oxidized. So, each each on and in each on time there is oxidation process and in off time there is basically the transportation of molten metal from the below oxide surface on the surface. So, like that uh, this process actually proceeds in a layer by layer fashion. Hmm. This is a case for micro arc oxidation of uh, titanium on Ti 6 4 substrate. So, you will find that uh, on the surface uh, there is lot of porosities and if you see the cross section there are also porosities, but one interesting thing is that this is a research investigation. So, you will find that these porosities are not really interconnected. So, even though there are porosities on the surface, but these are not interconnected mainly because of the reason that whenever there is channel formation because of the channel formation there is porosity, but uh, so the channel is again closed because of the uh, molten metal flow from the below oxide region on the surface. So, intermittent portion if you see you will find that that is full of the um, molten metal, but outer part there are a lot of oxides which is actually closed in nature. Because of this fact there is a lot of roughening of the surface and that rough surface is beneficial to promote the cell growth. If you see the extra diffraction analysis there is presence of rutile as well as anatase fill on the surface. In addition to that there is also few cal calcium phosphate phase formation. And if you see the nano indentation properly you will find that nano indentation decreases the uh, because of nano indentation if you see the Young's modulus under distribution you will find that hardness increases and Young's modulus decreases in the PoE of film. And uh, this decrease is beneficial, but decrease was mainly because of presence of porosities on the surface. There is significant improvement in the wear resistance that is also typically for uh, that oxide layer because of the presence of the oxide layer the wear resistance property increases. And another interesting feature is that there is decrease in the coefficient of friction. Hmm. So, decrease in coefficient of friction was mainly because of formation of the uh, oxide film on the uh, surface and if you just use synovial fluid while doing corrosion, corrosion test you will find that its coefficient of friction further decreases. Then uh, this is wear depth actually you get. So, it is oxidized layer there is formation of something which was uh, oxide layer which is present and that oxide if you see carefully after the wear you will find that uh, if you do wearing what happens is that 
there is the removal of the material from the surface and uh, that uh, removed material actually if you check carefully it will consist of oxides actually because this is oxide layer only that uh, so you will find lot of uh, that charging effect from the surface actually. And uh, because there is formation of oxide layer again uh, when you do wearing further you will find that that oxide acts as a uh, interlayer and as a result of which coefficient of friction decreases because the two body wear changes from two body to three body wear. It is very interesting to note that uh, when you do the uh, contact angle measurement of the PO sample, you will find that there is significant decrease in the contact angle value of the um, PO treated uh, sample as compared to that of uh, as received sample. So, this is contact angle of as received sample, this is for PO treated sample. Hmm. So, contact angle decrease is beneficial because you can uh, conclude that there is increase in weightability of the surface by the PO treatment. If you check the corrosion behavior, you will find that corrosion behavior also is improved because you see that because of PO treatment there is shifting of the E core value towards the normal direction. Hmm. And uh, when you deep in hang solution and see the calcium phosphate deposition rate, you will find that there is not much significant difference in the uh, deposition rate, but if we keep for a longer time possibly we would get some results. So, this is again this again needs further investigation to conclude on the uh, bone formation behavior of this uh, PO treated surface layer as compared to that of as received substrate. But uh, as weightability is increased naturally you can say that cell, pro cell adherence will be more on the oxide layer. So, uh, you can understand that uh, not only that oxide scale uh, which is for example, if you talk about that uh, plasma electrolytic oxidation, this plasma electrolytic oxidation can be applied for formation of the oxide layer, this can be applied for formation of phosphate layer if you use NHPO4 as a solution it can be applied for the formation of silicate layer, if you use sodium silicate as the uh, uh, solution. So, depending on the solution choice you can have different types of product on the surface, different types of uh, compound on the surface not only oxide formation. So, you depending on your requirement you can basically vary the process parameters and get the desired thickness, get the desired roughness and also desired uh, properties on the surface of the metallic materials particularly titanium, magnesium and also the aluminum. Hmm. And purpose may be anything for example, titanium and magnesium the purpose may be corrosion resistance application, purpose may be wear resistance application. So, both purposes it can be applied. So, you can conclude that uh, this uh, power plasma electrolytic uh, treatment is even a very nice and interesting treatment and a kind of modification of the anodizing operation, where you get very thick uh, coating of oxide or modification of any chemical conversion, electrochemical conversion coating you can say, where thickness uh, can be as high as 150 to 200 micron and uh, as compared to that of 2 to 5 micron of anodized surface. And uh, in fact, for any other chemical conversion coating uh, also there is only very thin oxide, very thin oxide or very thin phosphate layer which is uh, which are formed because uh, as soon as the surface is covered the reaction stops. So, that is the limiting point. So, as soon as the, the use deep it in solution there is formation of nucleation of uh, that product and then its growth and it continues till the full surface is covered. So, as soon as this full surface is covered everything stops, but in plasma electrolytic oxidation or pulse electrolytic oxidation the thing is not stopped, but that rather beginning. So, as soon as the surface is covered with oxide scale then there is breakdown of the oxide scale uh, because of very high voltage uh, application and because of the breakdown of the oxide scale there is channel formation and in the channel there is a plasma generation because of 
the fact that the inner channel region acts as the high resistance region and very high amount of heat is generated in that region. And, uh, and because of that uh, uh, high resistance region generated and high heat generation, the underlying substrate gets melted and that molted uh, material they pass through the channel towards the surface and then again there is formation of oxide scale on the surface. Like that the cycle continues. So, the thin monolithic layer oxide is acts as a kind of base for the subsequent oxidation. On the other hand, in case of anodizing or any other chemical conversion coating, when there is very thin oxide layer, it acts as a kind of uh, it is a last point till when the uh, process will continue. So, after the process stops actually, but here the process starts beginning when there th the surface is covered with the oxide layer. So, uh, though there is there are porosities which are not there in anodizing, if you think of anodizing again in anodizing operation, if you see carefully or chemical conversion coating, see carefully there is formation of uh, yeah, micro porosities, but the porosity dimensions are quite less, not really even micron level, but nano level porosities are there. But here porosities are porosity dimensions are in for varies from 1 micron to 30 micron. But those porosities over here uh, is a little different from the porosities in the process of anodizing or chemical conversion coating. In their porosities are all throughout the coating, but here porosity remains on the surface and uh, below surface region porosities are not there because that is covered with the molten metal. So, uh, the roughness is because of porosity there is roughness generation, roughness is beneficial for some of the properties like biocompatibility, weightability these all properties. So, this is another uniqueness of this uh, particular process. So, third uniqueness may be in the other case whenever you talk about anodizing the surface is full of oxide layer and that is monolithic, but here thick oxide layer even there, but still it is not really so brittle because it is composite in nature. There is a presence of uh, aluminum molten aluminum or solidified aluminum in the channel which actually offers the toughness on of, of the surface or oxide layer. It is basically a kind of sarmate layer which forms uh, on the surface of metal. Then uh, because of the extra diffraction you see that there is oxide layer which is uh, present very nicely. So, this particular technique can be applied for alloy of uh, for oxidation of alloy of aluminum, alloy of magnesium or alloy of titanium, which otherwise is difficult to do in case of anodization. Uh, so, anodization can only be applied for pure metal, but can very well be applied on the uh, alloys actually alloy system. And uh, you will find that uh, due to PO operation there is decrease in the uh, Young's modulus value, which is beneficial for improving the um, I mean for application as bio uh, bio implant particularly when it is titanium based substrate. Hmm. Because of the PO operation there is significant enhancement in wear resistance, thickness is quite high. So, you can use the coating for not only scratch resistance application as is there in anodizing, but can also be applied for high stress wear resistance application then ga gauging your wear resistance application for different applications it can be applied and can also be applied for uh, thermal barrier coating. So, because thickness of the scale is quite high, so you can always use it for thermal barrier coating application. So, but people have not started doing these all things because this process is patented and again in research stage where most of the studies concern microstructure investigation and understanding the effect of process variables on the properties of the coating. There, there is enhancement in corrosion resistance even though porosities are there because they are not interconnected and naturally these oxide layer can also be applied for improving the uh, biocompatibility particularly bioactivity of different alloys and metals which are used for bio implant application. Thank you so much.